How's everybody doing tonight? We're going to continue the in at Christmas. We're up to day six, if I'm not mistaken. Um, we've been saying we're going to do three boxes per night. We actually haven't yet even once <laughs> of the five prior days done a full three boxes. So let me give you my word right now that we're not ending this stream until we do three boxes. Maybe we'll do four tonight. Maybe we'll do five tonight. I don't know how many boxes we're going to do, but we're doing three. At least three. We're not stopping. There's no stop. There's no quit. Get some coffee if you have to. Actually, don't get coffee. The whole point of this stream is for you to bore you to sleep, so scratch the coffee. I think let's start right up here at the top. All right. Let's grab that box. That was the box that farted, not me. I'm not like some John Kerry type of slob. Um, you know, I'm up to episode 486, and I think there was only once that I farted during the live stream. And I like, I probably should have like coughed over it, but I tried to like make like that squeaking basketball sound with my sneaker, and I didn't get it there in time. And it wasn't very noticeable. I listened to it the next day, but anyway. 486 episodes they're usually over an hour some of them have been like four and five hours so i think it was a pretty good ratio so i was thinking about how i flip these pieces over they have these little like numbers on the back so i usually start by flipping them over get all the numbers facing the same direction i think i'm going to do something additional tonight i think i'm going to put them in like rows by their pattern see like these two have the same pattern, and this one has like similar but different pattern. This one's totally different. I think I'm going to put them not only with the fours pointed up, but categorize them by pattern. Somehow I think that's going to help. Well, this piece goes on the top row. That's another thing we got to do. All right, the top row pieces, we're not going to worry about the pattern. So for the ones that are top row, we're just going to throw them right up on top we're not even gonna talk about the you know the pattern oh man i forgot to look up what what these patterns are called uh bulbs maybe uh, they look like bulbs to me but maybe there's something else combination of bulbs and um ports negative bulbs i don't know like, you see this one, it has a bulb on the left, a bulb on the bottom, and then ports on the top and side. There's probably some official jigsaw term for that that I unfortunately don't know. This one's like the opposite of that one. Yeah, yeah, I'm putting them in all the categories now. It's actually, I thought there'd be more of these first two rows. Usually that's like the most common style of piece, but I'm not seeing that too much tonight. All right, well, anyway, while I sort these pieces out, let's open up our on-the-spot uh, board game. Oh, by the way, I have a Christian board game that I'm going to do on Christmas. Be here for that episode. Even if I'm not done the Nativity Puzzle, I'll take a break for one night to do to play the Christian board game. That's going to be cool. Maybe I'll get some family members to play as well. You know, I mean, it's Christmas, you know? It's like a family holiday. All right, first question of the night. What decision do you need to make right now? Wow, that's so funny because uh, I asked a question like right now like one son's living in california one's in albany but the son who's living at home and my wife i just went and asked them both this question like right before i started the stream and i didn't know that was going to be the first question out of the deck so that's crazy and i don't think i can give you the details fully of the question because it was a financial question i'll give it maybe in percentages so i was thinking about I mean, everyone's thinking about right now, like inflation, like how come the the prices are going up, but the salary is not going up. And someone sent me something at work 
that they probably weren't supposed to send me. It was like they sort of did something in a lazy way. And instead of like chopping up, you know, like they talk about like NASA and CIA and places like that and they compartmentalize information. Someone or military, they'll say it's on a need to know basis. Well, someone didn't follow that rule <laughs> and they sent me too much information. And as a result, I saw what they were billing my time at. And I'm not going to tell you the number, although it's like shockingly high. It's basically like this, you know, <laughs> I don't want to give too much away, but apparently this is like a thousand dollar stream that I'm doing every night. I mean, I don't get a single penny for doing it, but like if my company was charging someone for this stream, it would be worth at least a grand per night. So anyway, I see the number and I had seen the number 20 years ago as well. So in the past 20 years, let me just do some quick math. I'm just making sure my screen's not on the computer, right? Okay, so let's see here. So I'm going to plug in my pay rate and divide it by my bill rate from 20 years ago. So it was 22%. So like what I was getting billed at, I was getting paid like 22% of that. So what I get paid now, it's like, it's higher. It's like 40% higher than 20 years ago, but the pay rate is more than that. So let me do the same calculation, the pay rate divided by the bill rate for the current numbers. Like I literally just saw the November numbers. So like we're 11 days into December right now. And the percentage is 16.6 uh, repeating. So it used to be 22% and now it's like 17% just to use sort of round numbers. Although the 22 is rounding down and the 17 is rounding up. So it's even more dramatic than that. So I just went to like my wife and son and was like, should I ask for a raise? Like, why am I getting paid percentage wise, like less than I used to? I'm like older, I'm more experienced. And I think my billing is better these days because like, I was kind of like heartless back then, you know, like nowadays, if there's a not, if there's a day at work, that's not busy, I'll bill it to vacation. Even though I'm like, you know, at my sitting at my computer all day long if there's nothing to build to i'm not going to build to the office so i just like build a vacation and i didn't used to do that 20 years ago so if anything they're making more money now from my time than they used to so like why am i getting paid a lesser percentage and i was thinking so the question i was asking and my wife and son is like, should I ask for more money? And my, my wife's answer was like, absolutely. I've been telling you that, like, you need to do it. Uh, and my son gave much more conservative answer. And he was like, well, what if you ask for a raise and they get fired? Who teaches that to kids to think that? My son's 16. and it, But I remember when I was like 21, like thinking the same thing, like, oh, what if I ask for a raise and they fire me? <laughs> Why would they fire you? If you ask for a raise, they either give you the raise or they don't. Now, if you ask for a raise every six months, it could get annoying and you could be the first one on the chopping block when it's time for cutbacks. You know, that sort of, I, I can see that logic. But like you walk into someone's office, ask for a raise and they fire you, like why would they do that? They would have, like, they could do that, but they'd be harming themselves more than harming you. It's almost like they would only do it if they needed to necessarily make an example of you. And it's weird because you think about, like, you know how everyone complains about all these, like, diversity, equity, and conclusion lately, and it's like someone comes to your office. It's like in that show, The Office, the U.S. version of The Office with uh, Steve Carell, when they were always having those like seminars, but back then the seminars were like, don't do this, don't do that. <laughs> Nowadays, the seminars are like someone comes in and they're like, I'm from whatever group. And they just spend like 90 minutes, like telling you you're a horrible person. <laughs> they're like, they don't even say like, 
don't do this, phrase it that, try to be nice, like the stuff they used to say 20 years ago. Now they're just like, you're a piece of shit, accept it, um, admit it, say, <laughs> tell everyone you're, you know, it's like they're just not even nice anymore um, about it. I will say that my company does get tend to get good people, but it's still bad. But here's the reason why I bring those up. I'm not even complaining about those lectures because honestly, when you do get one of those lectures, they can insult me for 60 minutes straight. It's not really a problem because that 60 minutes is billable to that lecture. Now, here's the point why I bring that up. So the percentage I'm getting paid went from 22% of the bill rate to 16% of the bill rate. And now I'm thinking, is it because we're spending like three hours a week in these diversity, equity, and inclusion lectures? Like not only did I have to pay the lecturer, I don't begrudge the lecturer, I mean, whatever. They went to college and majored in it. They should at least at a minimum get to make a lecture at these companies. I, I'm fine with that. But what what is happening is that like a thousand workers, instead of working, instead of billing their time, are sitting at this lecture not billing their time for an hour times like 1,200 employees or 1,500 employees or however many show up to that meeting. I mean, there's a cost there. <laughs> and you could say, oh, well, it's not really a cost. This is a fixed salary. They could work overtime. You know, I mean, you can say that, you can make a spreadsheet, you can tell yourself that, but the reality is the person gets up and they don't decide, I hate to break it to you, <laughs> I hate to burst your bubble, but they don't decide their day based on what's most important for the client today. They decide their day by what's on their calendar, what can be moved, what can't be moved, and... What time do they have to work? You know, and if it doesn't fit, if your work doesn't, if your work, if they don't have anything going on, they're going to work 14 hours. If they got something going on, they're only going to work nine hours. And that's not going to change whether you make them go to a DEI lecture or not. So, um, let me see here. One, two, three. So it should be four here, right? But here's the problem. This is pink. And this is blue. So do I have any of these pieces like, are all the fours pointing up? Because the way it looks now, nothing looks right. Yeah, they're all pointing up, they're all blue. So how are they gonna connect to this pink? Let's take a look at our reference. Uh, let's see if it's about to turn blue. Is the sky about to turn blue? Not really. Uh, in fact, there's supposed to be a branch here. Did we maybe miss a piece? I don't think so because we've already got seven pieces across the top. This is pink. Wow, this is crazy. Uh, none of these pieces look right. Not only do none of them look right, but this is the only one that even has a bulb on the left. And that does not look like a match. This is solid pink. This is solid blue. There's no effing way that that's a match so what is going on here all right let's t let's take another look what what did we screw up is it does box four not go here something is off wow this is the only candidate and we're looking at it and visually can confirm that it's wrong let's try it anyway i'll tell you why in a minute why we're going to try it anyway no, it doesn't fit. Um, this is crazy. These are all the pieces that grow across the top. And the one we need is not there. I'll tell you why I tried this piece anyway. Because the print runs can be different colors. The printing is not always consistent. And the boxes, because it was, especially because it was an advent calendar, they could be not all from the same print run. So you could potentially have a blue piece going into a pink area, but it also doesn't fit. Does that fit or not? I, I can't really tell. This is supposed to be our close-up camera, but I didn't zoom it in yet. All right, let's check it out here. Uh, yeah, that doesn't fit. 
Um, wow. Okay. Um, is this a three or not? That's a two. Okay, that explains a lot. Box four doesn't go there. Were we supposed to open box three first? Oh my goodness. I'm spending all this time talking about what a great worker I am. And I opened box three and sorted the whole freaking thing before opening box four. Here's what we're going to do. It's going to be fun. We're going to assemble it. <laughs> we're going to assemble box four, even though box three isn't in place yet. So it's going to be like kind of floating in space. I think it'll be kind of fun. Let's see if we can do it. Um, let's just start building here. Let's see if it, let's see if that works like that. All right, we got two pieces together. I think we can do this. Totally doable. Um, I right, got three options here, but we don't have three options here. In fact. This must go over here, and that's the only way to even make this work. This is going to attach to box three, because this is four. That's the only way that could go, and that's not correct. Oh, okay, I guess that's not the only way. Well, it, it's got to be on the left, but this doesn't have to be second. You know, I had the piece lined up. I just didn't connect it. Anyway, whatever. Or is that still wrong? Yeah, that's still wrong. Okay. Uh, apparently, I'm doing really stupid stuff tonight. But, all right. We got the first row. So we got something to build off of. Uh, is it going to be this easy? Like the piece I had sitting there just fits right in there? It did fit right in there. I don't know if it's going to continue to be that easy. Uh, probably not. But let's see. Oh, so the answer, the question was, what was that question I was supposed to be answering? Like, what's the answer you need? What's the question you need an answer to? What decision do you need to make right now? So that was the decision, whether to ask for a raise or not. I'll tell you a lot of thoughts... I have a lot of thoughts about that, and I don't know. I haven't made a decision yet. It definitely seems like I could ask, but I also think that I'm probably not going to, and it's not because I'm scared. Uh, believe me, I'm not scared at all. I can I can ask any day. That's not the issue. Um, the issue is that I'm not... It's like if it isn't broken, don't fix it. Like I'm not really in a stage right now where I need it. Like if I needed it, I would ask for it. I just feel like I'm doing a stream at night, which means I want to be hopefully done with my job by 11 p.m. Uh, my son, one of them is still in high school, which means I want to go to his track meets on the weekend. Like there's a lot of stuff that I still want to do which would conflict if I got really aggressive about work. So basically there will come a time in the future where I'm willing to, like if you go in and ask for a raise, you have to be willing to raise your work level commensurate to the raise that you're asking for. You're asking for a raise in salary, you have to be expected to provide a raise in delivery. That could be more hours, that could be more responsibility, that could be higher quality. I like to think my quality goes up every year. And that's where the issue started because the bill rate has been going up, but the pay rate has lagged behind. But my company, they have a new building. The building has baristas in it. There's like, it's very nice. The furniture is nice. The air quality is nice. Like everything about it is nice to the point that I don't want to say that it's worth that 6% difference that we demonstrated in the salary from, um, you know, comparing salary to bill rate from 20 years ago to now. I don't want to say that having baristas give you free co coffee 
like makes up for that, but it's nice. And there's a lot of nice things. And even those lectures, those lectures are nice. Like those lectures that I was complaining about a minute ago, I'm only complaining about it because I'm a white Christian 50 year, I'm literally exactly 50 years old. Like I'm the stereotype of the person that people would hate. Like that's the only reason that, so what am I? I'm like white Christian male heterosexual, uh, I don't know, I'm married with children, I'm in good shape, I have full head of hair. It's like basically everything about me is the type of thing that the people who give those DEI lectures would hate. So like that's probably the only reason I don't like those lectures. Like if they didn't hate me, I wouldn't hate them. So I'm I'm not going to take it personally. Like, you know, in another decade it's like someone else's turn to be hated. So like, really nobody should be hated. It would be nice if everybody just got along. But that's not the reality. That's not how the world has like ever worked. Uh, there's always been scapegoats. Um, you know, and I don't, uh, I don't reject my sort of turn. You know, not that I, not that I, again, not that I enjoy it. I'm not a sadomasochist, but you know, let people complain if they want to complain. You know, I don't really care. I mean, if it makes them feel better. I, there's a lot of stuff I complain about. And I would hate if, like, people got mad if I'm complaining. Because I would feel like, uh, for example, when I was a kid, my mom would give me work. And I would be like, oh, why do I got to do this? You know, something like that. And then I, And she would say, like, with a smile. And I would reply... I'm getting the job done. What do you care if I'm smiling or not? I mean, not in like a mean way, but you know, it's kind of like, so how, why did I start telling that story? Anyway, it was basically like right now it's other people's chance to complain and I don't begrudge them their chance to complain. And, uh, I would like to think that on the time when I complain that people will allow me that right. You know, once in a while you feel like complaining. So, if people want to vent, I don't care. It's fine. If they get violent, I suppose that's a problem. I don't suppose. That's definitely a problem. But if they want to make a DIY lecture and and say that uh, that they're whatever, have a hard way to go and stuff like that, yeah, I mean, they have every right. I, I don't have a problem with that. In fact, I'm probably not even saying enough. I'm probably supposed to say that I agree 100% and I'm and an ally. No. I don't really know what those words mean. Uh, my official position is if it makes them feel better to say it, then I support them. But, like, I don't really think that I did anything wrong. I mean, you know. Like, what, I'm going to be, re like, responsible for stuff that happened before I was born? Like, how's that even have make any sense? Why is this piece not fit here? It's, I guess it goes one lower. It looks like it goes here, right? Like, what am I... Let me switch to another camera angle. Let me see what it looks like from this camera angle. Yeah, that still looks good, right? Why doesn't that fit in? Does it fit in? It doesn't. Oh, it doesn't fit in. What can I tell you? I guess it goes there. So there's another piece that looks like something like that. So where's that other piece? This is it. There were two similar looking pieces, at least from, you know, a certain angle that looked similar. Nope. That's not it. That could be. But it's not. That could be. And it is. So, what goes next to it? Um, can you believe we started this night by picking up the wrong, opening the wrong box? I picked up that box three and I thought it was empty, but apparently it wasn't. Alright, let's take a look at the reference here. I just want to know where this um, wreath goes. The wreath actually goes right here. Uh, so probably here it starts. 
No? Yes? I can't really tell. Does that look right? I think that's wrong. I think that goes one lower. I don't know. Hmm. I can't tell. Oh, let me get the close-up camera. Does that look right? Does that piece look right? I don't think it is. It fits though, and there's even a line going through it. What is? It? Why is that line there if that's not the right piece? The reason I don't think it's the right piece is because I don't see the piece that goes here. Hmm. Like, there's only three wreath pieces. Let me put the three wreath pieces together first, and then we'll try to get them, like, you know, put them all into the uh, puzzle together. The rest of the puzzle together. See, that's not a fit. Why did I think that fit? All right, finally that fits. That makes this go here. And I guess this goes here because that's the only spot left. All right, so now we built the entire wreath. So where does it go? I guess it has to go here. Yeah, that piece was in the right place the whole time. I don't know why I, I had to take it out to figure it out, but it was apparently already where it needed to be. You know, I heard the people who pay for those, uh, DEI lectures that tell you that like white males are horrible. I heard that it's other white males who actually pay for those lectures. It somehow makes them feel like less guilty or something, which is weird because it's almost like, you know, in like the 1400s when, or whenever it was when people would buy indulgences, it feels kind of like that. It's like the white males that got in early and made a lot of money off the country, they're now, you know, millionaires, billionaires, but they feel guilty. So they pay for these DEI lectures, and they assign these white males that just got to the country, like, recently, to listen to these lectures and take all this, like, guilt on them. It's almost like buying indulgences, isn't it? It's something like that. I have this piece, must be crooked. Yeah, I had it backwards. All right, that's how it goes. Still doesn't fit. <laughs> Do I have it backwards again? All right, this has to fit here. It does. I guess I was just a little something off. Something was a little off. All right, we built, um, I think so anyway. All right, we built box four, but we didn't do box three yet. This is kind of fun. Now we're going to connect box three to box four. This is going to be nice. It's going to be fun. So we somehow did box four without first doing box three. Because that's just, you know, apparently how we roll. Yep, box three is completely full. I don't know what I was thinking. Let's get box three. Let's do our same strategy of making those lines that seem to uh, speed things up a little bit. All right. So, yep, three. So this is box three, and we're going to do our strategy of lining them up in their little, um, in their patterns. But we're also going to grab the straight edges and put them at the top because we know the straight edges go up here. 
they must. They can't go anywhere else. Hmm. I might create rows that I can might create the same pattern in two different rows. But if I do that, I'll correct it at the end, I'll sort of like, make a pass. When I think I'm done, I'll make another pass to correct all the mistakes that I will have surely have made by that point. You know what, do you think it was like maybe a good idea to do box four first? I don't know, maybe I'm just being an optimist, but I feel like box three is now going to go very quickly. And it's not like box four went badly. I mean, we had this like a frame and this wreath and this chimney, it was actually a pretty easy section. And now because we did it first box three should also end up being easy. So I think that worked out. But you know, I'm one of those people who like always thinks things thinks that things work out like I know that uh, some people are like religion, uh, God works in mysterious ways, you know, that kind of stuff. I and yes, and I am familiar with religion and I am religious, but I, f I like to think that I'm also naturally optimistic. Like I don't think like I just feel like, you know, I don't want to say the catchphrase like everything happens for a reason. I want to say it's something more like you play the hand you're dealt and every, every, um, you know, I think some people say like when one door closes, another one opens or something like that, or there's like opportunity hiding behind every corner or something. I don't know. There's a bunch of catchphrases out there and I like them. I, I believe in them. I think that things can and do often work out and I don't want to tempt fate. You know, I certainly don't want, there's some things that don't seem like there could be any possible good from them. And I certainly don't want to tempt those fates, but I'm generally optimistic. Can we put it at that? Is that, is it, is it making me a horrible person to be optimistic? Is that now a crime in this day and age? I know that some people think it is. They're like, how can you be happy when there's like people starving somewhere? It's like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I feel bad. I guess I would like them to have food. Let me see what I can do to help them. But if I'm not allowed to like laugh at a comedy movie until everyone on earth is like, has their situation like in the best possible scenario, it's like nobody's ever going to be happy ever. It's like... <laughs> We all have to take, you know, what we can, the best we can make of it. And we have to just accept, you know, that we're going to help each other and that we're hopefully all going to improve our situations over time. But we're not going to like beat ourselves up over the fact that today we had 20 bucks when someone else only had five bucks, as terrible as that may be. But, you know, we're not going to let it ruin our day, be it positive or negative. All right, let's start building group three. Enough of this, like, fruity talk we're doing here. Uh, and by fruity, I don't mean anything insulting or negative. I mean fruity tootie. Like, Rudy tootie, fresh and fruity. Is that proper? I think that's like, uh, is that on the Denny's menu? Who makes that Rudy tootie, fresh and fruity? I don't even remember. Somebody makes it. I think it's like pancakes with, like, um... Some like raspberries and um, and strawberry. No, it might be like whipped cream, and it might be like in the shape of a face. All right, we're gonna have to Google that next. Rudy Tootie, fresh and fruity. Is that what that is? All right, so put in your guesses in chat. Who makes that, and what is it? I'm gonna say it's a Denny's menu item, and it's pancakes that look like a happy face. But honestly, I don't remember. So we're going to Google that and we're going to find out exactly what that is. Rudy, Tooty, Fresh and Fruity. Imagine there's nothing in Google and it's something I just made up. And now it's like recorded in history that I said like Rudy, Tooty, Fresh and Fruity in a live stream because that better really exist. Because if not, 
I don't know where I got it from. All right, let's let's bring that up on the old Google. All right, Rudy. How do you spell Rudy? How do you spell Tootie? Rudy Tootie. The facts of life, Tootie. No, different. Rudy Tootie, fresh and fruity. Okay, we're not the first people to Google it. Okay, IHOP. Yeah, IHOP, not Denny's. Okay, so it's IHOP. All right, so I had the restaurant wrong. Let's see what it looks like. All right, Rudy Tootie. Well, it has strawberries and whipped cream, but they're not in a happy face, and it looks like you also can get um, blueberries. You can do strawberry or blueberry. All right, Moon Over Miami. Is that Denny's or IHOP? I think that's also IHOP, right? Or is that Denny's? Moon Over Miami. That's got to be... I mean, if Rudy Tooty Fresh and Fruity is... Um, if that's... Um, if the Rudy Tooty Fresh and Fruity is IHOP, then the Moon Over Miami... Must also be IHOP. If Google will ever, ever tell us. There it is. What's the restaurant? That's it. It looks pretty good, actually. I could go for that Moon Over My Hammy. Oh, that's Denny's. Okay, so Moon Over My Hammy is Denny's. And uh, Rudy Tooty Fresh and Fruity is IHOP. Uh, post your favorites in chat. Okay, so let's start building this thing. Or assembling this thing. Whatever the hell. Let's do it. Okay. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I knew that wasn't going to work. But I went for it anyway. Maybe like this. Mm, fail. Okay. Oh, that was a big fail. All right, calm down. Just try something else. I'm barely even looking at what I'm doing. I'm just like tossing the pieces up there. I don't know. A very like autopilot sort of night for this puzzle. Is it three? Yeah. Hmm. As soon as I said that, the flow stopped, so I probably shouldn't have said it. Yeah. Yep. There's no flow happening right now. Which is weird, because it should be very easy. We have the trim, and we have the pink, and we have the white. That should be... That piece should stick out like a sore thumb. But I don't see it at the moment. All right, let's just keep throwing pieces up there. Don't try to predict what the piece is. Let's get a question going. That'll distract us. The more distracted we are, the quicker we'll assemble the puzzle. Does that happen to you when you like do stuff like better when you're distracted? Like if you try to rollerblade, it's like difficult. But if you're like not thinking about it, then it's easy. What physical item can you not live without? Have you ever, like, tried to walk? I think there was an epidemic. Was it in Kenya or Nigeria? It was somewhere in Africa. And they had... Um, some people thought it was a neurological disease. And some people thought it was mass hysteria. These girls in the school, they all forgot how to walk. Like, a third of the girls in the school, like, forgot how to walk. <laughs> Because it's an, again, it's like rollerblading or it's like hitting a baseball or it's like, it's one of those things that you can only do when you're not trying to do it. Like if you try to consciously think how to walk, I don't want to infect you with this meme, but this is what happened to these girls in Kenya. They like all forgot how to, like a third of them forgot how to walk and they like, I don't know, I guess they're relearning or something. They were like walking like ducks or toddlers they like couldn't you know they got infected with that meme and all of a sudden they were consciously thinking about every step which is like 
an impossible way to walk. You can't. You got to just do it like naturally. You can't think about it. All right. Look at this piece. We should really be able to get this piece. I mean, it's pink. It's yellow. It's white. How are we not seeing this piece? We even now know what it looks like. Yeah, we definitely have the uh, puzzle solving version of that problem. <laughs> Because we can't find this piece. At least I can't find it. Maybe you see it. I do not. And I'm not going to worry about it. At the end, there'll only be one piece left, and I guess it'll be the piece that fits there. As long as we just keep making progress, we'll get there in the end. Oh, that's the piece. I picked it right up by accident. I was trying to pick up that piece. And I picked up that other one instead. What about this one? Nope. No way. I can't believe that fit there. Is there a second chimney on this roof? No, there isn't. Uh, so I don't know what the hell this piece is. Uh, you know what? Maybe there is a second chimney. we got to flip this paper over. There isn't a chimney, but there's a slant. There's like a, a change in the pitch of the ceiling. So, I, I, it could go here, is my point. And it does, in fact, go there. So then this one could go here, and it does, in fact, go there. Didn't fit in yet, but it will. All right, is this piece correct? I don't think it is. I don't think this piece is correct. I'm going to pull it off. Maybe it goes here instead. Uh, that looks even worse. I don't know where this piece goes. Somewhere. Somewhere other than the two pieces that I tried it at. Moon over my hammy. That's a good sandwich. I think the cheese is just like simple American cheese and the ham is like that thin sliced deli ham and then was it sourdough bread I still have it on the screen here what's the bread in the moon over my hammy let's see here we got to add the word recipe right what is Denny's moon over my hammy uh, let me see here ham scrambled egg sandwich with Swiss cheese and American cheese Wait, they put Swiss and American on artisan bread? What does artisan mean? It's like, tell me what the bread is. I don't need to know that it's artisan. Can you just, like, tell me if it's rye bread or not? Um, so, sourdough? It's not rye. Alright, so it looks like the top has, um, the bottom has American cheese and the top has... The egg side has American cheese and the, and the uh, ham side has Swiss cheese. In the middle, there's eggs. And there's also some, you know, there's some artesian, artesian bread. Um, anyway, moon over my hammy. Go to Denny's and try it. We went to Denny's on Christmas one year. And... Um, I'm not sure why we did that, <laughs> but we did that one year. We went to Denny's, and um, they told us it was going to take 45 minutes to get a table, and then we got a table immediately, so I don't know why they told us that. Uh, and then they were like, it's going to take a while to get your food, and it took the exactly normal amount to get the food. Basically, the workers didn't want us there on Christmas for some reason. I don't know what we did wrong. Maybe it was just a coincidence. Maybe they're trying to, like, shake us down for tips or something. I'm not really sure what the problem was. But um, there was no problem. We went to Denny's, and we went on Christmas, and we ate the food, and everything was perfect. But the, like, I don't know, what's the hostess? The person who, like, meets you at the door? She had, like, all this, like, reasons why 
it's not going to work out. It's like she was trying to talk us out of going there. I don't, I don't know what it was all about. Everything was fine. Everything was perfect. Go to Denny's on Christmas. I highly recommend it. But, you know, the hostess might try to talk you out of it. I can't really, I can't really say why that is. But you might experience that. Yeah. Um, I don't remember the question I was supposed to be answering. I'm really bad at remembering what question I'm answering, apparently. What physical item can you not live without? I don't even remember reading that question. Did I read that question? Where are these coming from? What decision? Yeah, I guess I did. What physical item can you not live without? Wow. I have no memory of reading that question. Um, what physical item can you not live without? Um, like, it must there be one? Let's try to think. If I was, like, stripped naked and dropped off without any physical items, could I live? I certainly could. So... I don't know why they're asking me this question. Is it like uh exaggeration? Like a like I'm is it like one of those questions like you're on a desert island, what are the only three Air Jordan models you would bring with you or something like that? Like it's one of those type of questions like really I can live without this thing, but for the purpose of answering a question at a party, I have to pretend that I can't live without them. All right, so what three items Okay, I can live without them, but I will now be answering what three items I would take with me to a desert island, but I don't need any survival items. This is a very well-accommodated desert island. It's only a desert in the sense that there's no entertainment there, so I need to bring three items with me that I can live without, but for the purpose of this exercise, we're going to pretend that I can't. All right. I think um, weightlifting rack, bench, and bar. But that see, that's the problem. Like, for example, I could say, like, guitar, amp, and stand. Um, I could say car. The car is, like, self-contained. Let me say car because that's self-contained. See, the problem with, like, if I bought a computer then I would need a monitor and mouse and keyboard. And that's like already four items. So it's kind of difficult to fit. You know, like most things can't be accomplished with only three items. So I'm going to pick a car just because you really get a lot out of a car. There's like, you can drive it, you can sleep in it, you can um, play the radio on it. Like you can get a lot out of a car. So... That's definitely one of my three items. Um, and for the, as far as the other two items go, I'm going to also try to pick self-contained things. Like I don't want to pick something that needs a second helper item because then I only get one more pick. So if I want two more picks, then I got to pick two more self-contained items. Uh, and I'm thinking about what those might be right now. Not sure. All right. Wow, that doesn't fit either, huh? Okay, it looked good. It looked good until I put it in, and it looked all of a sudden very bad. And I see the real piece. It's right here. I don't know why I put in the wrong piece. Okay. Let's try to get this right going forward. No more wrong pieces. Right, that's definitely the wrong piece. Why am I trying a piece that I know is wrong? All right. Okay. Good. Thank goodness. But what if it was really right? Uh, I, I guess we'll never know. Okay. It was wrong. That's the right piece. Um, so we got the car. What other items are we bringing to this desert island? Um... See, I, I, I mean, I'm tempted to say water purifier, but it's not really a desert island. It's an island that's deserted of all entertainment. 
they have fresh water. They have like some magical fish tank that gives you all the protein you'll ever need. They have like garden that all the vegetables and fruits you ever need will grow. So really you just need like stupid meaningless stuff. So we said car for one. Did I say the second item yet? I don't think I did. I think we're still just stuck at car. All right. So car. Um, hmm. So I, I can assume that the island has gas, right? Like I, like I can gas the car whenever I want. Like I don't have to waste a wish on, on gassing the car. You know what? There's three items. It's ridiculous. I mean, how can you... Let me read this question again. Let's see. Three. What physical item can you not live without? Oh, it's only one item, not three. Okay, car. My answer is car. Um, I can live without a car. I'm just answering car because they, they want to hear an answer. But obviously I could live without any physical items. All right, we've done two boxes. So what should the, be the third box? Maybe like right here? I think that's good. Yeah. What's that going to look like? Well, if we went, hmm, let me see here. It's not even here. It's It's here. Yeah, this is a mess. This box is a mess. It's all like trees. It's all trees. There's going to be nothing to key off of until we get down here at this like lower level. Uh, I wonder how many boxes is it across? How far are we from finishing this? We haven't even gotten to the exhaust yet. There's probably two more boxes to get to the corner. Uh, should we start working our way to the corner? I'm not sure. I think let's go yeah, yeah. Let's do this box. I, I just feel like we're supposed to. All right, so. All right. We're going to do this box. So this is three, so it should be six, right? Let's take a look. I don't know why I said that would be six. It's absolutely not going to be six. <laughs> this was four, so six is there. Seven, eight. I think it's going to be nine. Anyway, it's going to be the box below three. The box below three is nine. That's our box. Let's dump the pieces out. We're doing at least three boxes tonight. We're not giving up until we've done three boxes. That's just something we've decided. We're doing three boxes tonight. All right, let me grab the next question out of the deck. Okay. All right, that's the next question here. Which player has the best name? I'm the only one playing until someone talks in chat, so I guess I have the best name with John. I can't believe I won best name with John. That's like the world's most common name after Muhammad, I think. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, you know what? I'm not going to tell that story. Let me give you the short version. There's a bunch of people named John, and the one who isn't named John is named Sean. But, you know, Sean, John, Ivan, Muhammad, they're all kind of the same thing. All right, what's a moment in your life you'd like to redo? Um, like, redo it like it was so much fun and I want to do it again? Or redo it like I have regret and I want, <laughs> and I want another crack at it. I want to maybe do it right this time. Um, I'm not sure what they mean. Or is it open to interpretation? I shall... Redo whatever I feel like redoing for whatever reason I feel like redoing it. I'm going to redo something. And whatever I'm going to redo, that's going to make... I'm going to have some reason that I want to redo this thing. And what could that reason be? Good or bad? Am I reliving it because I enjoy it? Or am I redoing it because I think I can do it better? i got to think about it. Let me think. Um... So I have to think through some items in my life. Like, oh, there's definitely ones I want to redo just for the fun of them. That's that's like no question. 
But I feel like the reason I want to first examine potential ones that I would redo differently, because those ones could have an effect that sort of butterflies over time. Why is the moon over my hammy in the corner? All right, let's just get rid of that. Um, so if you redo, if you re, if you redo a moment from your past that you're redoing just because for the fun of it, that's like its own reward. You're not like, you're not changing anything in your personal history, but if you redo something and you change it, that could have an effect in the future. Like, uh, let's very simple example. Let's say I redo I'm buying a lottery ticket and hindsight is 2020 and I now play the numbers that would have won. Uh, now I'm, you know, a billionaire cause it's Powerball and I just won like 380 billion. I'm like richer than Zelensky in Ukraine. So let's say, um, so that's it. That's what I would do. Um, I seem to recall at least once in my life buying a lottery ticket. I don't remember when it was. I think I had heard a commercial on the radio and I was like, oh yeah, we're lottery. Okay. I'll give that a shot. And then I bought a ticket and it didn't win. And I was like, what a scam. I'm not buying any more lottery tickets. And I know you think like you got to be in it to win it, but really you don't because like the odds of winning the lottery are like, I don't know, 300 million to one. Like, what are the odds of like getting a lottery ticket in a birthday card or finding one on the street? Like, I don't feel like you're significantly changing, significantly changing your odds when you buy a ticket. So like, I don't buy lottery tickets. I don't see that. I don't see the point to it. But I did buy at least one lottery ticket in my life. And I don't remember what that lotto was up to or how many people split the winnings. So let's just assume that it was three million. Let's assume that it was like a nine million dollar pot and two people won it. So if I can go back to that moment in time and switch the lottery ticket to the winning numbers, then we would have split the nine million three ways and I would have gotten three million. So that's the change I would have made. So then I would have had an extra three million and th and keep in mind this is when I was like 20 years old or maybe 24 years old or whatever. Basically it was before I bought my house. So now when I buy my house, I'm going to buy it in cash, which means I'm not going to have a mortgage. And if I'm not going to have a mortgage, can you imagine how much more money I'm going to have every month? So now with that, all that extra money every month, I'm probably going to make different decisions about career, different decisions about so many things. <laughs> I mean, could you imagine if your mortgage was covered every month, like how that would change your life? Well, if you can go back in time and pick the winning lottery tickets, uh, you can do that. Um, that can work out for you. Uh, I don't know, am I cheating the system? Was I supposed to give a different answer? Like I would have went back to high school and like played the quarterback in the fourth quarter or something like that like is that the answer I'm supposed to give like I would have asked something of somebody at some point uh, I would have applied for some something I don't know I, I don't know you tell me your answer what, what would you have done if you could change anything would you have changed something how would things have how would that change have affected your life I don't know you tell me the ball is in your court. Wow, a lot of columns on this uh, number nine here. Like, I don't think we've seen that shape yet, right? We see the opposite of that shape, but not that shape. All right. You know why we're getting so many? Because we don't have so many of these first two. These first two columns you usually have, like, so many of, but not today. Not today. Today, we're sharing it. We're spreading the love around. Not the love. We're spreading the pieces around. We're spreading the shapes around. Well, that sounds, again, like the love thing. 
Um, all right, calm down. It's not that. Uh, it's not that type of show, even. Okay. Um, hmm. Yeah, another new shape. We haven't seen that one before. I'm only like halfway through this deck, through this box, and we already have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven unique patterns, uh, and we may not be done yet. And look at this. This stupid shape pattern has more than those two, what are supposed to be the two most common. Okay, now it's like tied. Um, but we still have a lot of pieces to go. In fact, we have so many pieces to go that we got to start going quicker here. No more dilly-dallying. Dilly-dallying. <laughs> Who came up with that one? That's a good one. Dilly-dallying. Hmm. Is this another new shape? No, this is right here. No, 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 that's not there. Is it over here? Yeah, okay, there it is. I think this column has the most pieces so far. But this one should, by the time we're done, also have a healthy m amount. Um, but definitely this, uh, this box nine is very diverse in terms of shapes. Yep. A lot of shapes repeating here that you don't expect to have a ton of uh, repeats, but they do in this case. Look at this one. The only port is at the bottom. They got bulbs on the top and the two sides. Have we seen that pattern yet? I don't think so. We saw the opposite of it right here, but we didn't see that pattern yet. Wow. I'm going to have to move some of these down because if I stack them over here, they're going to get in the way of the build that we're about to do. I may have to move even more pieces. Okay. All right, it's finally time to start building. So, let's do that. Hmm. How far out is it going to go? That's something we need to know. We need to establish. All right. We have some of this roof continuing. How about that? How's the, where's that going to go? This looks like roof, but I don't think it matches that other section. No, it doesn't. Absolutely does not. It's going to get in there somewhere at some point. Hmm. Didn't see that coming. But this one suddenly looks good. Yep. Look at that one. A little bit of roof, a lot more tree. Hmm. How about this piece? Where is that piece? Right here? Yes, it is. It is indeed. This one, the only piece busy enough to possibly go here. I mean, do you see this piece? It looks like a Jackson Pollock painting. I mean, that's crazy. <laughs> Do they make Jackson Pollock jigsaws? Those probably would be very easy. We should get one of those. Do it next. Not next. I can't ever say what's next. But I do it at some point. At some point. How about this goes here now? It does. Hmm. Jackson Pollock was that guy who worked in a barn in upstate New York and he would bring paint cans of all different colors and just like 
slash them. Let me get you a better camera. He would just like like do like this and this and like splash them all over the paintings. And you know, he apparently got like fifty million per piece for that or whatever. I don't know. I mean, he, like back then, people were like making fun of Jackson Pollock. Like, can you believe this is worth like millions of dollars? But his stuff is way better than what they sell nowadays. Um, I heard some people say that that modern art, like some people like suspected of like money laundering. I think it's n maybe some of that, but also some of like physical NFTs, if you want to think of it that way. But I also think, and I've heard other people say that, I heard other people say it, but when I said it, I thought, oh, that's interesting. Like, some people want the art to be bad because they feel bad. Like, first of all, they could create the same bad art, so it kind of makes them feel better. But second, they're, like, jealous of the people cre who are able to create fine art, and it makes them feel better to, like, stick it to those people by paying $100 million for crappy art. <laughs> like, it's a strange kind of way to spend your money just to feel better about the fact that you can't create actual art so you overspend for crap art but you know the world has a lot of strange things and that and i wouldn't put it past uh, people because all you got to do is create a market the, the art doesn't need to be worth what people pay you just need to have you know it's like when you have like an ebay auction you just need uh people to compete against each other and that drives the price up and the real art world isn't any different you know it only takes like a few billionaires beating against each other and the world's crappiest art could sell for millions because the right people want it heard of it believe it's going to go up because it's like an analog nft which is a stupid expression but and maybe it gets the point across. Does that fit there? That was weird. That was a weird piece. All right, what about this roof? We haven't done anything with that. Maybe this piece? Yeah, that looks good. Uh, and then there should be a very similar piece right here. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Uh, what about down here? One more, right? Or have we reached the the low limit we might have we might have reached a low limit or maybe we got i don't know maybe we got one more that might we might already be at the low limit i'm not sure i don't know we don't know until we start moving in but maybe uh, that doesn't fit uh i'm making some bad calls here time to get a good one i don't see any good ones All right, what about this? Nope. Nope. Oh, maybe. I'll try that one. No. No, of course not. What was I thinking? Uh, no. That's stupid. I feel like these pieces got out of place, or maybe I was careless when I was putting them down the first time. Well, I don't know. Maybe I'm not studying the reference enough. All right, reference, what's the secret? All right, no secret, it just looks like regular drywall. Um, where's some piece with some regular old drywall? Maybe this one? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. That's got to be the lower limit. We like finding several pieces going that way. It's got to be the low limit. I don't know. Is this going to fit? 
Maybe here? Nope, neither. Here is probably where it goes. Hmm. I'm just kind of guessing it goes there. Maybe it's a good guess, though. I don't know. Maybe it's a bad guess. That's a horrible guess. Alright, how about this guy? That's good. Let's try. I, I feel like every time we try this piece, it's very wrong. I, I'm not trying that piece anymore. That's going to be the last piece we put in when everything else is done. We still didn't find the drywall piece. Like, what's going on? Uh, not drywall, siding. We didn't find the siding piece yet. It should be so easy, right? Alright, that's something. All right, th this piece is full of siding. So of course it's not correct. All right, there we go. We got it somewhere. All right, now we're about to go on a tear. Now everything's going to fall into place. Starting right about um uh, let me think about it. Well, I meant it's going to fall into place um, philosophically, not like physically. Everything's currently falling. <laughs> Sorry, everything's falling into place philosophically right now. It should meet the physical world very soon. Hasn't yet though. In the in, in the physical world, things are really dragging. But in the in the philosophical world. I mean, things are looking really good. There's really, stuff's really starting to happen. I should really see the progress very soon. See, look at that. That's some sort of progress. Uh, if you're trying to break the puzzle, that's excellent progress. Is this supposed to fit somewhere? Are any of these pieces wrong? Okay. Hmm. How about right here? What goes here? There we go. Give it a shot. Nope. But yes. How about Booyah? Now, what goes here? Look at that shape. That should be very recognizable. We can't miss that piece. We see it, we know it's correct. But yet, we do not see anything that Oh wait, does this whole thing need to be spun? No, no, that's not right. Let's pick this up, is that possible? Uh, that's correct, that's in the right shape. So, I'm just wondering why I don't see this piece. Let's check every piece. Is this it? That's it. Well then, this could be the next one. It is. All right, how about this one? No, no, it couldn't be. Well, maybe, hmm. I'll try this one. I knew that wasn't gonna fit. I still got this huge, like, piece of what? What is this? It's a bunting. It goes down here. Oh, does it go in there? That doesn't make sense. I don't get it. I don't get what's going on here. 
to go, yeah, it doesn't make sense. Because this is the low level. So it's not the low level. To go here, that that looks like a possibility. No, because if it goes there, then we need to build an entire another row. So that can't go there. Hmm. I'm confused as to where this goes. Hmm. Like this. Yeah, we have to build a whole nother row. So we were not at the low level. All right, I think that's gonna work out good. Cause now we're just gonna fill in one line and it's gonna be kind of easy. Kind of, I didn't say it would be easy. I said it would be kind of easy. Kind of easy is simultaneously kind of hard. It's just, you know, just like kind of. It's not easy, it's not hard, it's just kind of. That was stupid. All right, that was smart. But also incorrect. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, I'm just sticking these pieces in random places. I don't know why I'm pretending I have a plan. There's no plan going on here. I'm literally just going to start hitting these pieces with hammers until they go in. That's my plan. I call it the hammer time plan. I believe it's... Uh, they teach it at West Point. They call it Operation Hammer Time. When all else fails... You break out the hammer. Oh man. All right. Did I shove these pieces in wrong places during Operation Hammer Time? All right. That was bad. Let's let's try to stop doing bad stuff. Wow. That was two. I hammered two pieces into the wrong places. All right. I know there's a popular video game called Warhammer. But apparently, there is no Warhammer. And you should very carefully finesse the pieces into where they actually go. Like, if you just hit them with hammers, that's not going to be correct. Like, what is this? Is this correct? I don't know. Like, this piece has, like, a window on it. Like, what's that all about? There's no windows here. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. I think all these pieces are wrong. And that's why they don't fit. Alright, let's, uh, let's start disassembling this. Everything done during Operation Hammer Time was incorrect. We're going to have to uh, redo it. I, I want to leave these last three pieces unfinished as a protest. I don't think it was good. I'm unhappy with the results of tonight's puzzle. Look at this. this. Does this even fit here? I don't know. Let me get a hammer. Okay, it fits. All right. I'm John Rapp. This is Just Rest Your Eyes. Good night, and see you tomorrow.